that I found myself alone, found myself addicted. I found myself, even when I was working and, you know, making money, that I would spend all my money on the weekend and drugs and come to work, you know, Monday morning broke and, and uh, you know, just uh, feeling horrible about myself. And why did I do this again? And it just became an, a vicious, endless cycle of not being able to break out of that type of lifestyle. And I, when I got in my early 20s, I began to look at other people around me. I saw people in and out of prison. I got arrested a couple of times for burglary and different things and realized that, you know, my, my path was probably heading to jail if I wasn't careful and I didn't want to go to jail. But the main thing was I was in this vicious cycle and I saw no way out and I saw other people, uh, you know, going to prison and, and, uh, and, I, and I wanted them out. I wanted to find a way out, but I did not know how to get out. Towards the end of my addiction, I had gone on a cocaine binge and um, I was kind of running crazy. I had totaled out a, a work truck that I wasn't supposed to be driving. and. I kind of went off the deep end for a few days, was using cocaine for several days, and wound up in a hotel in Miracle Mile, Tucson. And uh, I had a gun with me that I used. I had it with me. I was in this hotel room. I'd been up for a few days doing cocaine. And I began to kind of hallucinate. I saw spiders uh, running up and down my body. and. Um, I just began to feel, feel very hopeless. And I remember I began to write a suicide note. I was gonna take this gun and kill myself. I began to write this suicide note. And uh, I just blacked out. And I woke up the next day and uh, this note was next to the bed. It was in this hotel room. And my gun was laying on the night table. And I began to write, you know, my story. But in the middle of it, it was just a bunch of curse words uh, that didn't really go together. And then it just stopped. And somehow I blacked out. And I believe uh, somehow that was the grace of God. And my, my mother was a Christian. She prayed for me. And so I believe that that stopped um, that. And uh, from that point, um, things began to shift in my life. I met my current wife and uh, she had been saved at a, a large church in Phoenix. And I, uh, we got together and met and within seven weeks we, we married. And uh, uh, we were tr I was trying to find God, I was trying to uh, do what I could to change my life, but I really wasn't very serious and didn't really have any direction. And so um, we had gotten saved. Uh, we had experienced back up. We had experienced some marriage problems after about six months of marriage, and and uh, you know looked like it was really heading towards divorce. And I didn't want a divorce. I didn't want to go through a breakup, and uh, really wanted to work this through. And realized we needed more than just, you know, watching Christian television and, and reading Hal Lindsey books. And so, um, uh, you know, we began to look around for different churches and we came to the church that we now attend now, the Door Christian Fellowship on Veterans Boulevard. And uh, both got saved that day. You know, I basically really got saved. My wife rededicated her life that day. And, and from then on, we began to serve God, and we began to uh, we began to live for God. And I was excited about uh, what God was doing. It was just before we had actually come into the church that I had detoxed off of methadone, and so I had beat that. Uh, but I was still drinking heavily and, and and still smoking pot. And within just a few weeks, God began to help me overcome those things. And uh, uh, just the conviction of the Holy Ghost uh, was upon my life and the preaching and challenging me to, to live a different lifestyle. And God really began to help me. But through all my story, you know, one of the things that I began to realize that 
was that sobriety was not an end goal for my life. I needed a higher vision. I had had times in my past where I cleaned up for a while. I would clean up for a month, I'd clean up for two months. Uh, but then there was nothing to take the place of the boredom, there was nothing to take the place of the emptiness that the drugs were no longer filling in my life. And so I realized that I needed something, uh, I needed a vision, I needed something to shoot at in my life and to attain. The call of God to preach was something that was uh, um, you know, introduced just through the preaching of God's Word. And uh, through that process, I didn't feel uh, like I not necessarily wanted to preach. I didn't feel qualified just because of my background. I felt like I was too broken. I felt like uh, I had gone too far in many areas of my life. I went past all the roadblocks in my life, did things that uh, I was deeply ashamed of. You know, the, the Bible talks about uh, many times where it talks about I will deliver you from the shames of, of from the shame of your youth you know and uh, David you know talked about that he said you know D deliver me from the from the sins of my youth and so uh, when I was an evangelist I was ministering in the Seattle area and uh, I was preaching at a church and in the middle was a weekend revival I remember it so clearly it was a Friday night and uh, this couple came into the church and uh, they were sitting there, it was right before church. And uh, the girl had her head down, she looked very afraid. Uh, I could tell they'd been living on the street. Her hair was disheveled. She had a, she had a fearful look upon her face. And uh, so I, I had preached that night. I gave an altar call for people to be saved. I'd given part of my testimony of how God had delivered me from drugs. And this couple came forward, I prayed with them, and, and they got saved, they gave their lives to Jesus. And um, they came back the next night, this girl, her, her hair was combed, she was changed. Uh, there was a different countenance in her face. And I remember talking to her after church and she had several cut marks uh, all up and down both of her arms and uh, she was a cutter. And, uh, and so she had, a, she had a, a, a blouse on or a dress that revealed her arms and it was so noticeable. I tried not to look, but she said, aren't you gonna ask me about my, about my cuts? I said, yeah, okay. And she said, well, I just got so down. I felt so dead after using meth for so long that, that I began to cut myself just to feel pain, just so I knew I was alive. They had gotten saved, they had lost their child uh, through drug abuse, and I later talked to the pastor a few months in, at, at conference, and he had said how they had gotten their, their, their child back and they were doing well at that time. And I just remember thinking, you know, hey, my testimony uh, that I thought disqualified me was actually something that ministered to somebody in a very desperate circumstance. But just pursuing uh, God's purpose has been an adventure. It's been something that has been very rewarding. We should never limit our future uh, according to our past.